Hello everyone, how's it going? Elliot here and welcome to the Retro Future. Today I'm going to be making my very own Game Boy game using EEPROMs, development cartridges and a bunch of crazy Chinese devices that I had to buy in order to make this work. Now I can't imagine this would have been exactly like it was back in the day when these games were being made but it's going to be pretty similar just using some slightly modern but probably a lot worse quality Chinese devices and software. So I was scrolling through eBay and I found a blank Nintendo no Game Boy development cartridge. So those are the cartridges where you take an EEPROM and you flash that with the game and then you plug it into this cartridge and then that allows you to play the game that was presumably being developed on the actual hardware. So that was used to test the game, get media reviews and send it out for demos and all that kind of stuff um, and also debug the game if there was any faults in it. Um, so these are really rare and very hard to get but I managed to pick this blank one up for £50. Now that got me thinking can I make my own? And the answer is yes. I have right here in this little bag an EEPROM chip. So this little thing right here is an EEPROM. Now it's a very surprisingly heavy little device. It kind of feels like it's made out of ceramic. That little window in there is a uh, light resistance, specifically UV light. If you were to expose that to enough UV light, you could erase the whole chip, which is something we're gonna have to do in a little bit um, to actually get this to work. Right, I'm gonna wind up my, uh, my window blind here. I know I just <laughs> said that that's a bad idea, uh, but I need to get some light to show you my Game Boy development collection. Hello! So this is behind the scenes at the Retro Future and this little cabinet is what I want to show you. So in here is my Game Boy game development collection, my development Game Boy game cartridge collection. Lots of words. Um, this one is the one that we want to look at though. This is the blank cartridge. Very exciting. They should look like this with the chip sticking out of them but this one is blank. Interestingly, this one is a Game Boy Color flash cartridge and this one is a Game Boy Advance flash cartridge. Now, I stress the word flash, that's a DSi flash cartridge, uh, because these are EEPROM and EEPROM is not flash memory. So these ones work very differently. I have no idea how to get a game on there. Um, and also, I haven't actually ever spoken about this cartridge. So, yeah, interesting one. Well, I wonder what game is on there. Leave a comment down below which one you think it could be. Ow, I just hit my head on my light. Okay, so we're gonna start off by giving the cartridge itself a bit of a clean because as you can see, there's a bunch of sticky residue on here. Plus these things are obviously very old. I wanna give the contacts a clean and show you the inside. So here is my little EEPROM and you'll be able to see there that once that is plugged in, that looks a lot more familiar to a development or prototype Game Boy cartridge. But obviously we need to get the game on here. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second, uh, but let's just give this thing a clean as I said. Now on the back of these development cartridges, you'll actually notice that there's a Phillips screw. So if we slide this open, we'll be able to see inside here. So this cartridge is the most basic available. There is no battery for a save and it's also the smallest uh, size of a game that you can put on here. So this will be perfect for Tetris, which is the game that we're gonna put on here. You wouldn't be able to put Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening or anything like that on there. So, or Pokemon for that matter. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be basic games only. Let's give this thing a nice clean. It actually doesn't look like it's in too bad condition at all, um, but I do wanna just get that residue off there and give the motherboard a clean. Here we go. And just like that, it's looking brand new. Awesome, okay, I might as well just give this a little clean as well with some of the Mr. Sheen. So I'm just gonna go over the pins uh, with some isopropyl alcohol, uh, but this one actually looks like it's probably not been used a lot. There we go, that is all nice and clean. And if I flip it around the back, you will actually see right there the little Nintendo logo, which is really cool to see. Awesome, right, let's chuck this thing back in here. And there we go, one clean Game Boy development cartridge. So the first thing we're gonna need is this device right here. This is a UV light EEPROM eraser. So this is basically one of those UV nail lamps that I use to retrobrite stuff, except far higher power. So it's very important that you don't mess around with this. Um, it's a very, very dangerous thing if not used correctly. Um, obviously this one has a drawer to try and um, avoid letting UV rays just bounce around the room but the UV light does emit through the cracks and the crevices on the thin plastic of this Chinese device. So my recommendation is if you are gonna do this, 
leave it in a different room for 10 minutes. Don't let the EEPROM be in here for longer than 10 minutes. Um, and also if you've got any animals, obviously you need to be considerate of them. Um, but essentially how this works is you just pop the EEPROM in there, close that, this is like an egg timer. You set it to 10 minutes at the top there. And then you press on, the light's gonna turn on and it's just gonna set it in there for 10 minutes and hopefully erase the data. Now the reason you have to do this is because EEPROMs aren't made anymore. So you're basically buying old stock which is likely gonna have some data on it. And to check that, we're gonna use the next thing that we actually require in order to put the games on it, which is this. This is an actual um, EEPROM flasher and you just plug in the EEPROM like that. Other chips can obviously go in it as well and you lock that down into place to stop it from coming out and make a good connection. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna plug this in and we're gonna see if there's any data on this chip. The flasher comes with some software which I have installed. It does look very confusing but I will only be using the basics. There's a button at the top which allows us to perform a blank check. This will tell us if the EEPROM is empty. In this case it wasn't. So now I'll shove it into the eraser for 10 minutes and that should do it. After it's done I take it out and perform the blank check again. This time it tells me it's empty. Time to get the game ROM. I have a copy of Tetris which is in really bad shape due to its age, so it would be really nice for me to make a better condition one to actually play it. I'm using a sub-module GB01 and downloaded the ROM. Please read up on the legalities of this before copying anything I do. I will be keeping my original beat up Tetris as well as this reproduction cart that I make. I won't be selling them on. Before we can write the ROM onto the EEPROM, we need to select the correct brand and type. You can find this information on the top of the chip itself. Once I selected the right one, I can load in the ROM. I had to do this all again because the faulty Tetris car I was on about made such a bad connection and didn't correctly dump the ROM. Once it's in the software, I can hit the program button and it will begin to write the data. After that, there's a button to verify the data on the chip was successfully copied over and then I can unplug the EEPROM. I will gently push it into the socket to make a connection and then test it on my Game Boy to make sure that it works. After that's verified, I can then push it in all the way. My other real development carts have cool stickers and labels on them. Obviously these are all handmade and I would like to have a go at doing my own. And there we have it, my very own development cart. I am so pleased with how this thing has turned out. It is awesome. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to just go out and do this that easily because these are very hard to come by. I was extremely lucky to find a blank one. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, it's going to be a case of just hoping that you find one one day on eBay. Um, if you do, however, buy an actual development cartridge like this uh, that isn't working, you could use this method to put whatever game you want on there. You can see this EEPROM, by the way, is bigger than this one. Um, it could presumably take a bigger game. I know that BC Kid is a far bigger game than Tetris. I really like how uh, how homemade it looks as well. Obviously, I put homemade at the bottom and then put 2021 because you'd never want to fool someone into thinking that this is actually a Tetris development cartridge. Uh, that is a horrible 
idea. Well, there's only one thing left to do, and that's play it properly uh, and show you that it's all working. It just looks super interesting. I mean, this is definitely a, a passion sort of thing. Um, it's definitely passionate driven because it is obviously cheaper to go out and buy another copy of Tetris. Um, but I just really wanted to, you know, show all of you for educational purposes and entertainment and uh, have a good dinner myself. Massive thank you, by the way, to my friend Jamie uh, for helping me uh, learn how to do this. So there we go. It's looking great. It works perfectly. That is going to wrap up this video. I hope you have all enjoyed it. A very fun little one. Not sure that if everyone's going to find it as interesting as I did, but I really enjoyed it. So thank you very much to all of you who watched this far, and I will catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.